Okay, so once again, um, screen recording a coding session. Well, hopefully it will become a coding session. I don't know if I'm really going to get into it <clears throat> fully. I've been sick the last couple days, feeling a little bit funky. Um, docs open. Okay, good first step. Um, so let's open them. I need to get... What I'm, what I want to try and make some decisions about today is um, lookups specifically. Let's see, client. I'll look at that. I'll look at ledger. I want to look at um, chain model, and I want to look at the. Uh, um, Let's see the rates. Okay. So here's the ledger. Now the ledger is the one that I really care about right now. Um, the idea of the ledger is that it's a process that forces um, updates that might occur across different tables to be synchronized somewhere. I'm not so far, we don't have any models, I think, that should actually, where one update here has to affect something elsewhere. And uh, the way that I have sort of the system IDs working, um, they're kind of, they're like integer IDs, so they're meaningless. Uh, that's normally solved better by using something like a UUID. However, in this system, there's only one back end. We don't have to integrate from a bunch of different sources. So it's really not that big of a deal. Um, we can just use integers and guarantee uniqueness and not really worry about stuff. And we also get rid of the, the possibility of people trying to spoof stuff from the outside. We're just not going to do any of that. Um, so that's that's fine. Um, what I want to solve, though, is the lookup problem. So lookups, lookups. So we're not using right now, we're not using like a big database system like Postscripts, which we probably will move to later, at least for legacy data. Um, we want to have the current current day's issues for each shop that's using the system to be in memory and like really quickly accessible. Um, because there's running totals, things are getting updated like constantly uh you know new sale issue created that should like right away we should already have the pay record um in an unpaid state uh or an open state rather you know log to that specific cashier that cashier is known to be in the shop that means that that should be in that shop's record for that cashier for today today itself being an important idea because everywhere in the world changes day at a slightly different time based on their uh their offset from <clears throat> from gmt so or utc whatever splitting hairs utc versus gmt but versus super or whatever doesn't really matter um the important thing that we care about is that uh we're generally keeping track of when when the day changes so that a shop here in Japan will not have, um, when their day ends, they'll see the money, like the, the roll-up report for the shop will happen at the right time. And the next day, when the cashier comes in and starts creating pay transactions for customers, that that shows up in tomorrow's log and really is tomorrow instead of like half today and then some random point it disappears and they're skipped to the next day. Um, and that another shop in like the US somewhere, a shop in Texas doesn't have theirs broken in some weird moment too. Um, so we have to get the offset so that we know relatively what's a day for them. Um, and we can lazily, we can take care of that in a lazy way where like you've got issues that are from a certain time and we can know like what day that was 
then the next time that's checked, we can look at that and say, oh, that's from yesterday. Let's archive that, update all the rollups, and then, you know, move on. Um, same thing with the end of the month. We can kind of do that in a lazy way. That's not a big deal. Like, fairly easy to handle. The, uh, the thing I want to think about, though, is lookups. So are there any cases where I'm going to actually just need to look up a pay record by its ID and nothing else? The odds of that are actually pretty low. Um, for two reasons. We don't have... Uh, we don't have any cases where we're going to know the transaction hash before the transaction happens because we don't know the sender. We don't know the sender's address. So we can't actually make, like, figure out what the hash is supposed to be. So we can't look up by hash. Like, on the blockchain, we can't actually look up the hash on the chain. Um, we don't know... If we only know the pay ID, the way the structure set up right now, we don't have a lookup path that's not exhaustive going back from the pay ID to figure out what shop it was part of. Because that ID doesn't really mean anything. It's not connected to the shops or anything. So we could, of course, make that a combined key. Um, and one element of that key is the shop. Okay, that's, that's maybe a thing that we could do. Um, it's not obvious that that's ever a situation that like shows up, though. So, because any time that we're going to show a list of uh, transactions to a shop, they're going to have that whole, they're going to have access to the whole record. And if they're looking at the whole record, it's easy for them to do any action that like includes enough of the information uh, to do a complete lookup without like, they can send us what's effectively a complex key, which is like a combination of uh, the shop ID, <coughs> shop ID, the cashier ID, and the pay ID. Like we can find that easily, and they're always going to have enough information to request it that way. So, is there any case where we're going to look through just a list of transactions? Don't care who they're from. Don't care what shop they're attached to. Don't care what business they came from. And we're just going to look up by the pay ID. And talking through this right now, it seems like the answer is no. So we don't actually need a lookup function to get a pay issue by itself, which means that we actually don't need a table that is going to have just pay records in it because the pay records are actually inside of that nested structure that's like shop. And then the actual could show up here. Um, sales. So the sales record itself has um, a shop ID. The shop ID is a sales record. So each day's sales record is like an extension of a shop's existence. It's not inside the shop record itself. It's in this other table by itself that's just AJ sales. <clears throat> and that the primary key for that is the shop's ID. And within that record, we've got nested in there um, the totals, which go by uh, the totals is a key value map that goes from the currency symbol to the amount, the total for the day up to this point. And there's two kinds of that. One is the, the absolute total, which is always the AE total. And then you could possibly have different fiat currencies being represented in AE for the day. Um, so we provide that as a possible thing that you could do. Like you could have a list price that's in dollars or a list price that's in yen and charge them in AE. And then you've got the nominal price recorded in that currency and the absolute price recorded in, in AE, right? that's actually paid to you. Um, and depending on your jurisdiction, that's important for tax reporting, or maybe it's not at all. You can also just do AE with no no fiat list price at all, um, which can be better or worse for tax reporting, depending, again, on your jurisdiction. So how you want to play that game is up to you. But we want to provide that tool to uh, 
uh, users to businesses that want to use this so that they can like make up their make up their mind about it uh, anyway totals so that's a map and then issues is um, literally just a map of pay IDs to pay issues so if you want to get the whole pay issue out you would do a lookup in this table to get the pay pay thing out itself um, and then we have cashiers which is a collected value where you've got the user ID of the cashier and that points to a tuple that is the totals just like we've got the totals for the shop we have the subtotals that's the exact same model it's a map of um, the currency symbol to the accumulation um, for the day for that cashier <clears throat> and then you've got a list of their transactions for the day for that cashier so that means that we can look up the whole shop and organize things for the manager or we can look up the shop and organize it for the cashier or we can look up multiple shops and arrange them for the business owner side or the accountant working in the business or whatever. Um, so that gives us a good model to look down. That's a good top down tree tree models like this are really good for top down, but relational models are better for like way better for answering like really fuzzy questions where you might have some kind of data plus some kind of criteria and you want to line up a bunch of stuff on some arbitrary criteria they made and then filter through some other arbitrary criteria and get get a full answer back um and we're not doing relational module uh relational model here yet in part because i'm trying to force myself to keep this as simple as possible and also because i don't want to spend another week uh making a really good model like Actually, in the OWL project, like, SUDI has a um, another project called um, OWL. It's Automated Office, and it's got a really good, really detailed business model for, like, like for almost everything that's just general. Like, 80% of data that every business has, OWL actually handles, um, which is great. But that's a really complicated relational model. It's really good. It's really complicated. And, uh, you know, running, I mean... Like you, it really flexes a lot of what Postgres can do. That's great, but it's kind of involved even to touch. Um, and I don't want to get distracted with that because I can nerd out on databases all day. So anyway, the lookup problem, based on what I just said, I don't think we have any cases where in like version one of this, like the beta release version of this, it'll be useful, but not pretty. I don't think we're ever going to have a case where a user is going to just have a pay ID and have to look something up. So I don't think that's a thing. So we don't have to do like an exhaustive search. Then that's what I want to avoid is an exhaustive search. Um, okay, the chain model. Though. Well, the chain model. So this, okay, this process here, chain. Um, what it does is it looks through uh, it has a list of payments it's expecting to see and if they're expected to come through and they do um, then like expected to come through somebody has created a pay issue it's got this sender i'm sorry it's got we don't know this sender yet we know the receiver we know the amount and we know the serial number that's on it and the payload if those three, thing, three things match up then that means the pay happened it got mined on chain and then we can mark that as okay done um it's paid and then we clear that out of here we update that pay record inside of the, the big pay table over here, the one that I just showed you with the, the tree structure for shops, because that pay record carries with it who the cashier is and, and what shop it is. So we can find this really quick, update that record, say it's paid, and then update the totals in the shop. Okay, so that's good. Um, and we have the whole pay record here, right? It's right there in memory. Inside of this process is memory, and it's the one following the chain. It's querying the chain you know, every so often to see, like it's following each uh, micro block. Um, and 
each height, we have the old scene and the new scene of microblock hashes. So we know we've seen every microblock. And if we're missing a microblock, we're going to go back and make sure we've seen them all. <coughs> so inspect all the microblocks that we haven't seen yet, which is trivial. Um, okay. Got the whole pay record, which means we can do a proper lookup, which means we don't have to do. I think I've already got that accurately reflect. What I don't have is I've got this AJ Pay table, which is not a thing that needs to exist. So let me see if I can find other instances of AJ Pay because it's just wrong. Like this pay, we don't look up pay like that. That's not how. That's just not a thing. Okay. Um, AJ shop. That's real. What we would look up is AJ sales, really. And then do the work over in that process to pull the data, because this is like a concurrent read, right? So, uh, okay. Um, What is the, I don't think I have a, I don't have like a type for this, which I probably should, because it's going to be used a couple of places. Yeah, that's not what I want. Okay. Okay, we're going to make a sales model out of sales, out of the sales thingy, which means I have to include that there. Okay. Right. Um, so, what's the other thing I'm going to return? I might return. Okay, it could return error. So here's the thing. <clears throat> if I query sale, the reason I'm pausing and thinking about this is if I query a shop that doesn't exist in the sales record, that could just be that this day's already been finalized. Right? So like the last day was finalized, the next day, like and we don't have a new one for the next day yet because there hasn't been anything submitted yet. So we don't have a new a new record created. So there's two cases. Um, there's two reasons why you might not have a sales record for a given shop at the moment that you query it. One is that day has already been rolled up and there hasn't been a new one created yet because there's no new sales yet for, for, the, for the given day. Like for the moment that you look it up for that day, there's not a new shop record yet. So that's the shop exists, but the sales record doesn't exist. In which case you should return an empty sales record. With like, when I say empty sales record, I mean, it'd be a sales record with this shop ID in it. And then empty totals, empty issues, empty cashew. Okay. Um, all right, so that's one. The other case is you ask for a shop and the shop really doesn't exist. Okay, so there's two checks that might happen here. Um, sales, shop ID. So the first check is going to be, if we look up an ETS, shop ID, oh, AJ sales, shop ID, and we get back a list of one things, then we found it, then we're going to return, okay, found it. And if we get that blank, um, we're going to go to a next step, which I don't like nested cases, but it kind of makes sense here. There's only one layer. Case, ETS, lookup. Um, 
DJ shop. Shop ID. Okay, we never modify by sending the shop record back. So shop record is essentially read only. The only way you can modify this is by going through. Okay. The only way you can update any of these is to go through this process. And there is no function that accesses the AJ sales table directly ever. It's all update this page, you create a new page, you whatever. So this is essentially a read only function. Shop ID. So we're returning a blank, a blank record so that they can see that it's blank. And here we're going to return an actual error. And we're not going to create a new one. Because creation of a new one should be occurring right here with new issue. So we're going to go look at new issue just to make sure that we've got this straight. So new, yeah, new, there we go, do new, it's a pay thing. If it's a new, if it's a pay thing, it's new. We're going to the new, <coughs> new dealer here. I wrote this the other day, but again, I was sick, so I was kind of like out of it. Um, I, I know I got the idea covered, basically, but I want to reread this just to make sure I'm not totally crazy. So, new shop ID. Okay, so it's a new pay thing, and the shop ID is here. We look up the shop ID. If we don't have one for the current day, then we create one. And this will be submitted back into AJ Sales as the updated one. Yes, that's all correct. So getting a blank record to read back because the shop doesn't have a current record for the day is correct. And returning an error because the shop actually doesn't exist is also correct. So we're good on that. And this does do, this indeed does create like, um, the shop thing that we're that we want to have happen when you put a pay thing and there's got enough information to populate a shop record and, and get going so it starts everything and you know it commits the, the fresh one which is the same reason that all this other stuff happens like with the uh the pay the pay updates um oh and here's okay let's call it back so it's just like here for the chain yeah okay because the chain tracker is actually going to make this call and so the chain tracker can remove the update sale thing so that's solid. The thing with update sales, this is this is matching on done, meaning that the pay actually happened. Um, the commented out thing there is a timestamp. Um, actually, this has got the types down here. I can see. Or I think it does. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right here. So we've got done, fail, cancel, timeout. And actually, probably a refund. I'll decide about that in a second when I actually write the a second. I don't know how long it'll be. When I rewrite, when I write the um, the cancellation procedure and the tracking function to figure out about to find out about that. Um, okay. Anyway. All right, update sale, if it's canceled. Right, so cancellation magic goes on the refund list. This would be a place that we need to notify this guy about the cancellation and put that on the refund list over here, which we have not done. I've not created a refunds list over here yet. So that's the, 
which actually could just be the expecting thing. Like it's expecting and then update that pay record to be a thing that you can see. So in that, do we have a race or not? So you cancel the thing, you click cancel. At the same time that the pay issue went through, he, he being the AJ chain process, checks the chain, sees that it's actually on chain, and initiates an update over here as cancel hits. Cancel cannot hit at the same time. So cancel is coming from the user, like the cashier, right? And then a completed, the completed thing is actually coming from the chain watcher. They cannot both happen at the same time because this, this process is sequentially going through the messages that it received. So we're protected from having an actual race condition here as long as this process is the one that's actually doing the cancellation thing. Um, okay. So we, when we want to cancel this, all right. So what we want to check, actually, there's two things we want to look at. When done happens, done is coming from here. And it's possible. So can't, all right, so cancel is on the cashier side. He can send a cancel message. And done can only come from this side, right? Now, <clears throat> If cancel arrives, then no matter what, well, if cancel, if cancel arrives and the pay issue itself is already done, then we put this into uh, the refunds. Okay, that's pretty simple because we know it already got processed. So that's the that's the case where the payment beat the cashier. Okay, that's easy. Now the case where the cashier registers this as cancel. did not beat the, uh, if the chain wins and it's done and then he clicks cancel, we also go to the refund list. So the trick here is that actually the expecting issues, we need to let them hang out for a while, even after they're canceled. So that's the trick. Like we want to put like a time to live, something like that on old transactions so that they are checked as expected. Um, like we're still expecting them, you know, maybe up to like a day late or something like that. Because we wouldn't expect somebody like a store to do, do a transaction and push it through. And then even if the, like mempool is totally fucked up or something, those, the mempool will eventually get processed. But I mean, we could have a hiccup of like hours. That's possible. It's very unlikely, but it's possible. Um, so we can have up to hours. Um, and I think it's good, like at the extreme end, I think it's good to like have up to a day, just, you know, just in case, maybe 12 hours. That's really freaking long. Like in the eternity world, that's really long. Um, actually, what is it? A hundred blocks. So there's like this absolute horizon, this like fork protection. There's a fork protection uh height in eternity that's a hundred blocks and block heights come out on out it's like fuzzy but on average around every three minutes again that's fuzzy because it's kind of based on difficulty block block difficulty and whatever but 
Um, <clears throat> but on average, about every three minutes. So what's every three minutes? 100 blocks is 300 minutes. And 300 minutes divided by 60 minutes, which is an hour, right? So it'd be five hours. So five hours is how long? I mean, that's not getting stuff floating in the mempool for a while. I guess block height protection doesn't really, it doesn't actually have an application to this. Because you could just have stuff sitting in the mempool, and you're not talking about any fork in the chain. It's just like in the mempool, and it hasn't been mined yet. Um, that's the, like for some weird reason, like the nodes can't communicate to the whoever the current leader is or whatever, which in practice doesn't really happen. Um, just trying to think like what's, I mean, because there've been, we haven't ever had this problem, I think in eternity, but we've had other blockchains have been like hung for a while. Like we can't mine any blocks for like a long time. Again, though, a long time is like not that long. Yeah. whatever um i need a time yeah so i've got a ttls thing in here and i haven't really made use of it the way that i should but this is like super readers i think i've got the ttl thing going on yeah so do track Okay, and I didn't put in. <coughs> Whoa, excuse me. Sorry, I'm still. Oh. Um. Still sick. Okay, so the interface I wrote to this, the TTL, is something that caller actually chooses. So we'll just like decide ahead of time that the caller is gonna call for like a day. We'll just like we'll figure that out later. So two, but the two cases that we do have is that cancel comes in from a cashier and actually the thing is done or done comes in and the thing's already canceled. Either one, that's the two sequences that this particular thing could happen. Um, timeout could come in on a done. Very, very unlikely, but it could happen. Um, refund is a special case there. Okay. Fail? I don't think we have any case where fail actually can happen. Because I think the block, I think the mempool just won't let it get mined. Like, they won't mine the transaction and then return the funds to the sender. I think it just won't mine it at all. So it's not like we're going to see it and it came through or like it came through as a failed transaction. I think it just doesn't get mined. Um, I'll have to ask to make sure about that. But I think that the fail thing can be removed. I'm going to put a to do thing. So. Um, this is why I should live stream. Then I can this. Uh, okay. So we've got the case. So. Done plus cancel equals refund. Cancel plus done equals refund. Timeout plus any other condition equals that condition overriding timeout except for open. Yeah, okay, cool. So, do, 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 do. Issues. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm just doing a put issues, right? But that's not quite right. Um, what I need to do is Original. Oh, actually, would be a case thing. Yeah. So new. To, okay. So what's really going to happen here is case uh, maps get pay ID. Uh, 
additions. Um, pay status is open. Then we're going to do everything we just did here. So that's the correct thing to do in this case. Cancel. If it's canceled, we're not going to update totals um put and return oh. <clears throat> which means i would need to have so i'm going to need a table that's just uh, issues like businesses, and then each business is going to have a list of refund issues that they need to they need to do. And that's really straightforward. Um, and we could do that through the wallet in the browser. We could do it through the wallet on the phone for the the business owner. It's like not a big deal. Uh, okay. Well, okay. If we do it through, right. So if we do it through the, um, if we do it through the browser, we get that transaction back. We get the full hat. We know the whole thing. And then we push it through. We could also do that with. On the refunds, we have both parties. I think we have everything. We've got the refund amount, the payload. We have every aspect of this transaction. So we should be able to actually know what the transaction hash is going to be ahead of time. And then we can check for that hash. Oh, the thing that we don't know for sure is the nonce. Um, we could predict it pretty reliably, but we don't know it for sure. There's a race there, um, which isn't really good. So. Uh, so basically what we would want to do is we would want to put it in the refund pile and then when the refund is issued by the uh, we would want to be tracking like expected issues we would want to be tracking refunds as an expected issue that's basic Something like that. So, okay. I'll figure that out in a little bit. But suffice to say, we know that that's going to become a refund, and we know the refunds have to be paid by the, the whoever the person is that runs the business, or has control of the key. Um, cancel. Okay. So, new issues is going to be going to put issue A refund page timestamp okay And that's right. It's going to be this. What happens if we get done and it's a timeout?
or a fail? A timeout. If it's a timeout, right. So This should, like, <coughs> never happen. Timeout or a fail. Cancel refund. Open. Okay, done came in. <coughs> hmm. yeah. No fun. I would say that timeout. See, should timeout go? Should timeouts be actually pay or not? Because the timeout's actually going to be beyond. Shouldn't it be possible to see these? So archive these things correctly. Should have a timestamp on it. Put an ID around timestamps. Yeah, created. Okay, yeah. See, there's a created thing there. Okay, so we can have some idea. Like, <laughs> we can know when this was, and we can like clean these things up and put them back at. Oh, holy crap! It's a. Uh... It's getting really rainy and stormy outside, which means I need to go, uh, I've got like a little vegetable garden. I need to go make sure that that doesn't all get like blown down. Um, so this is the end of this particular stream. I will continue tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. Might continue tonight without streaming, but, um, anyway, I will resolve whatever this is, uh, which seems solvable. It'll just be like a go by creation time whatever um the repacking problem is like not a big deal uh yeah anyway i will be off uh go make sure that my plants don't get blown over thanks for watching bye